All right, well, I'm waiting for the solder gun or solder pencil to heat up. Uh, solder iron, solder pencil. So if you do, if you're going to find yourself doing, you know, I don't want to say a lot of soldering because it depends on, you know, a lot is irrelevant. It depends, you know, it's, 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 um, you know, uh, subjective. All right. Um, you know, when I had the, the shop and I worked on radios, I mean, the solder iron was, the solder station was on all the time. Um, I wouldn't have it on all the time here, but, you know, still, it would be nice to have. I just can't justify spending, you know, $130, $140. However, I've got a couple of old Radio Shack solder pencils here, or irons, and I'll tell you what, they're the biggest piece of shit. Excuse my language. Um, I mean, when it comes to soldering, they get by. Um, but I just don't like them after using a good solder station. I just can't get into these things that well. You know, they just don't seem to do it. I've got two. I've got a 25 watt and a 40 watt. Uh, I've also got a solder gun, which goes up to like 200 or whatever. Uh, but that gets a little too hot and then the tip's a little too big. Um, and that's a whole other story. So, but anyway, as I'm waiting for that to warm up so I can solder this or tin that before I can put the end on it, um, I got a call last week and a follow-up on an email from a local station that wants me to do a, uh, a 15 or even a half hour, if I wish to, uh, video on uh, firearms and firearm safety. Um... I, I really don't know if I want to do that because I don't do a lot of firearm stuff on the internet because I don't know who's watching. Uh, I don't know who's going to be taking advantage of it. Uh, I don't know if they're taking it the way that it's meant to be taken because I can't see their you know their their faces. I can't read their their expressions. Um, you know, and, and I don't want to be liable for, for somebody getting hurt uh, because of me showing, doing, or saying something. Because if I can't explain it to you, you know, and let's face it, you know, the, 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 the NRA classes that we have to give here in Connecticut uh, are 8, 10, 12 hours. Some, I've gone as far as 16 hours on sometimes because, you know, sometimes you just have to keep explaining things to get it to where they actually understand it. Um, you know, and, and you, you just can't do something in 15 minutes or a half an hour to, to get that across, uh, you know, something that normally takes a minimum of eight hours. So uh, I, I don't know if I want to get involved. I want to find out a little bit more. I want to find out if it's going to be a, a, a series of, of uh, you know, half hours or 15 minutes or, or whatever, how far they want to go. Do they just want to talk about safety rules which i don't mind doing um you know or do they want to get a little bit more in depth so i gotta talk to them a little bit later um and uh i gotta actually they want to meet me at the station uh, but i don't know if i'm gonna uh, go that far until i find out more about it like i say i just don't want to jump into the fire that's like after the sandy hook thing we had you know um a lot of the news media, for some reason, uh, they got a hold of me, and they wanted to start doing interviews, you know, and you know this and that, and about NRA, and you know, and I says, no, time out, you know, you're not going to get me into this because you're going to twist everything I say. You're not going to show the whole interview, you know. You're going to pick it apart to fit your need, and I don't want to be the spokesman for all the gun owners in Connecticut. You know, and that's what you're going to turn me into. You know, when they go to a gun shop or, or they talk to somebody about guns or, or anything, you know, that person all of a sudden is the spokesman. You know, he's chosen himself to be the spokesman. You know, and they don't realize that that's what they've done, but that's basically what they've done, you know. Um, you know, and they're either going to get people to agree or disagree. You know, I don't want to become part of that. You know, so I just told them back then, basically, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, uh, find somebody else. You know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I had a lot to say. But if they were going to give me um, the, the uh, I told them I would do it only if I had the last say on what went out. I had, I wanted to see it. I wanted to watch it, hear it, 
go over it, understand it, and only then would I give the approval. And they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't take that. So, you know, they want the last word, and that's not going to happen. Not with me. So I don't know if I want to do this other thing or not. All right, I think the solder iron may be hot enough. Now, flux. I'm not going to say use it because you could end up doing cold solder joints with it. However, flux will work great once you get used to soldering and using flux because it helps things flow and it cleans at the same time, almost like when you're doing a, a copper pipe or something. Uh, it helps everything flow. However, sometimes it helps it flow so fast, so quick that you think it's done you know, and you got it, and meanwhile you got a cold solder joint, but you didn't know it because everything was working perfectly. All right, so flux is a good thing. Flux could be your friend. Flux can get things done without overheating, but at the same token, um, it can be your worst nightmare. So, so I wouldn't recommend flux to everybody. Okay, so I just tinted the wire. So now I'm just going. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do it like I told. You. I'm just going to go over instead of the other way. Now, when I did the other one, the one that you guys didn't see, that maybe I'll splice in. I can, might be able to splice that in. Um, you'll see that I did it the other way, and I soldered it to the casing. Let me take that off. Now, this has a little cutout on it, a little notch on one side. That's the side I want to work with. Now I haven't got a vise over here to work with, so I'm just going to do it this way. Let me turn this a little bit, make sure everything's tight, and everything's where I want it. There. Again, I'm going to take my solder, and I'm going to use a little flux. Again, if you start losing flux, pay attention. It can, like I say, be your friend, or your worst nightmare. Now I'm going to start, I don't want to fill this so much that it starts heating up inside and, and melting that little foam in there. Remember that little isolator that's in there? So I'm going to start taking it and put it in there. And then I'm going to start running the solder iron down here a little bit to help draw the solder down into the point. There we go. Done. Nice and done. Oh, yeah, I just took some off. There we go. I got a nice shiny tip there. See that? That's what you want. Nice little ball at the end. Now what I'll do is I will take a little piece of emery cloth and I will clean it just to make sure that there's no flux or resin. Right now I'm using a Kleenex which really works a lot. All right. Now after that's done, let me unplug this solder iron. Oh, oh this back is spasming. Spasm. I'm going to put the meter on ohms and I'm going to put it on sound so I don't have to always look at it. Now, I want to go tip to tip which means now I want to hear the sound. So here's the other end of the coax. And I want to go tip to tip. So tip to tip. Aha! Hear that? Oh, wait a minute. I got two different pieces. <laughs> what a fool! I picked up the wrong end. I got two pieces of coax here. I was going to tell you. That didn't work. And very seldom does the tip to tip not work. <laughs> okay, tip. Come on. Boy, you know, as you get old, your uh, fingers don't work like they used to. Tip to tip. That tells me I got continuity going through this coax, so my solder joints are good. Now I'm going to go tip to shield, which it should not hear anything, which I don't. Now I'm going to go shield, which is ground, to shield. That tells me my ground is good. So ground to ground is good, tip to tip is good, ground to tip, nothing. And that's what I want. If I heard a noise there, that tells me I overheated something when I did that, that there. When I soldered the connector on and I shorted everything out. So that's what I got. So I got continuity. So... I have another jumper. Now why I have that jumper is because that was, let me turn this off, that tip, that connector I just put on there was part of this coax that I have in my hand um, that was originally three feet longer. 
but I cut three feet off it to make a three foot jumper to show you guys how to put the end on. And that was the one that I did that was all cloudy and you weren't able to see it. And that is this one. This is the three foot jumper. <clears throat> so, so that's where we're at there. Now this is that other coax I was talking about. I keep this just in case. I, I, I would use this like for a scanner or something. But even then, scanners work best if you got a scanner and you're going to put an antenna out. They work best, believe it or not, with 75 ohm coax. CB, by the way, is 50 ohm. Most of your transceiving stuff is 50 ohm. All right, 50 ohm coax. However, okay, I must have started another video.